The most common form of despair is not being who you are. Soren Kierkegaard was a man burdened with great purpose. He took his work and his character very seriously, yet all along he never truly felt certain about anything. The feeling of existential dread, the overbearing weight of our minute finitude in this infinite expanse of the universe, led him to develop our modern conceptions of terms like angst and dread. Responsibility, morality, choices, consequences, pain, all of these themes weighed heavily on Kierkegaard each and every day. While much of his life can be seen as leading to this moment, his great and lonely journey began one fateful night in October 1841. It was time. He was finally set to marry the woman of his dreams and begin the career he has worked toward for so long. He has reached the goal. So life should be good, right? Parents, teachers, friends, co-workers, everyone talks about how important it is to reach this moment. So it's no surprise that we can't help but think that this is where happiness waits for us. But on this day, without any warning, he breaks off the engagement and gives up his lucrative career. But why? He doesn't really know why. All he knows is that he can't take it. He can't take the whole world. And he knows he will swallow her up in his anxiety and constant overthinking. So somehow, he conjures up the courage to upend his whole life and go completely on his own. To take the whole world on by himself. How did he have the confidence, the belief in himself to do this? In this video, we will explore just that. Kierkegaard's most important message for us. How to believe in yourself. How to change your life even when you know it will be hard as hell. But before we get into it, it's come to our attention that most people watching our videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel yet. So please hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, and a like if you enjoy this video. It will really help us get some recognition from the algorithm. After breaking off his marriage, he locked himself in his Copenhagen apartment and started to unravel the very fabric of human thought. Taking specific aim at the mainstream philosophical and religious thought of 1800s Europe. Working in the shadow of Friedrich Wilhelm Hegel, the intellectual giant of the time, Kierkegaard decided to take his own route. Hegel's philosophy of history, and specifically of spirit or geist, left Kierkegaard unimpressed, and he felt that it allowed the Christian faith to continue in its decline. While Hegel decided to account for the various epochs and turns of history through the lens of a progressing human consciousness, which ultimately has no duty to God until the end of history, Kierkegaard pushed back hard on this. He looked at the superficial nature of most Europeans under this philosophy and felt like they had all lost touch with what it means to be an individual that takes charge of each aspect of their reality. According to him, resting our faith in the natural progression of history is simply a cop-out from the immense responsibility placed upon us. Being an individual was of supreme importance to Kierkegaard. He even remarked that on his tombstone, he simply wanted it to read only the individual. Kierkegaard emphasized the long and arduous process of developing oneself into a person that can form their own opinions and not simply be mouthpieces for the popular ideas that surround them. We see this all around us in pop culture. People consume the latest music, food trends, political opinions, and fitness gimmicks with an insatiable hunger and a short attention span always dropping one for the other as soon as something new is waved in front of their eyes. Because of this, we have a population of people that has no idea how to be themselves. So it's no surprise that it is so difficult for many of us to have the confidence in ourselves to break from the path others have told us to follow. First, we need to understand why it is so hard for us to go against the grain in the first place. When it comes to how well our life is going to go, it's absolutely terrifying to think that we might make the wrong choice. That 20 years from now, we will look back and wish we took a different turn. This fear hangs over us at every moment. Problem is, when we think of things like this, we end up missing what life really is. Because as Kierkegaard said, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. The world you find yourself in right now, the problems, circumstances, fortunes, or misfortunes, 
have a huge impact on what we feel like we're capable of. It often feels like we have no real free will or power in this modern mechanical world. This is how we end up losing ourselves to the speed and dizziness of existence. We are worried and caught up in possessions, success, and our timeline, that who the hell we are is literally gone. The greatest hazard of all, losing oneself, can occur very quietly in the world, as if it were nothing at all. No other loss can occur so quietly. Any other loss, an arm, a leg, five dollars, a wife, etc., is sure to be noticed. So, when it comes to those big moments, those life decisions, we need to learn how to accept something no one wants to. Regret. Regret is not just the result of some stupid decision whose alternative would have brought happiness. Somehow, one way or another, we always manage to regret any path we take. For Kierkegaard, it is simply inevitable that we will manage to twist our story to make it out that we could have gotten more. Especially these days when every time you open your phone, you see someone with more of just about everything. They say comparison is the robbery of joy, but really, it may just be because we take ourselves a little too seriously. If anyone on the verge of action should judge himself according to the outcome, he would never even begin. Let go of the fear of regret. It generates a future in your mind that has not happened and probably never will. It clouds your vision, your feelings, your gut instincts that could guide you to a place where you might actually end up with some level of happiness or content with your life. Kierkegaard grappled with this himself, being constantly ridiculed by his peers and community. He saw little to no recognition for his work during his lifetime. And despite being one of the most influential figures in the history of philosophy now, most of his work did not become widely known until well into the 20th century, despite his death being in 1855. He wrote frequently about his frustrations with those around him, even remarking that they couldn't even understand his complaints about their misunderstanding him, let alone getting them to understand his actual work. To their credit, Kierkegaard's work is quite difficult. Works like Fear and Trembling and Concepts of Anxiety can feel like a maze where one never really knows how literally to take what is written. But in these pages lies the key to getting the confidence to believe in oneself no matter what calls on us in life. From raising children to starting a company, we all have different things we are meant to do in this life. And the path to being sure about that is difficult. Kierkegaard lays out a three-step process to discovering one's way in the world on their own, and finally gaining the fortitude and independent spirit to enter back into the world without getting swallowed up by it. The first phase, the place we all start when we are young, is the phase of pleasure. Even when we think we want something for righteous reasons, it's usually some kind of pleasure that's driving us. We might pick a career to impress girls or guys, we might join the military because of the sensation we get at the idea of being fully committed to a cause, or we might decide to become influencers because we like the aesthetic we have seen on display. On top of this, our desires have a huge influence on what we value and how we behave daily. At some point, some people later than others, we progress out of this phase slightly. We see that when we chase pleasures, it has consequences for us and those around us. We start to understand what it means to control ourselves and be part of a community that has some sense of right and wrong, and that it's good for us to have some responsibility in it. This phase is what Kierkegaard refers to as the ethical. Problem with this phase, according to him, is that these change depending on the times, culture, and context that we find ourselves in. In other words, what is ethical in one group could be considered unethical in another. So we aren't really being individuals here because we are beholden to the ethical norms of the group or our time in history. The example he uses is a story from Homer's Iliad where Agamemnon is set to cross the sea and attack Troy, which is supported by Zeus. But when Artemis demands he sacrifice his daughter to gain safe passage, Agamemnon proceeds to kill his daughter. And Kierkegaard points out that this was completely ethical within what people thought at the time, as the state and its success was more important than any one person. Yet in his, and our day and age, this would not be considered ethical. For this reason, Kierkegaard thought we needed to move to a higher phase than this. This third and final phase was the religious one. Unlike the existential movement that birthed from Kierkegaard's work, and differing from Nietzsche, a thinker who shares much with him, who moved away from God, Kierkegaard went all in on the idea of faith. 
He sought to move past the church, the institution, the cultural, beyond even the philosophical, to articulate what it really meant to live with faith. This is because we could not purely rely on our own intellect to make the perfect choices. The world is just too big, and this will always torment us. At the same time, we cannot rely on the culture or ethics of our times because this means we have yet to discover our individuality. What we need is faith, faith in ourselves. And for him, that meant discovering an unwavering faith in God on your own. That said, God might not be the path for everyone. And it seems reasonable that we could still adopt a kind of religious attitude similar to what Kierkegaard expresses here. In essence, your philosophy on life needs to be almost religious in its content. The values you choose, the choices you make and the life you want to build should not conform to this or that group or culture. It should come from you and only you. On top of that, it should come with an immense feeling of responsibility. Because as he has taught us, there is no one else to blame, no one else to help you. It is only you. So, what will you do? Ponder that question seriously. Perhaps only after this will you have the confidence to be who you really are to walk your own path. And with that, you may discover the love in this world that makes it all worth it. Perhaps then, and only then, will you be able to fall in love with life itself. Love is the expression of the one who loves, not of the one who is loved. Those who think they can love only the people they prefer do not love at all. Love discovers truths about individuals that others cannot see. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.